Last season, we profiled a number of dangerous gender reveal parties, but the madness keeps happening. Now, a recent gender reveal photo shoot is blamed for causing widespread devastation. Joining me now is Dr. Carly Giesler. She's a professor at York College who teaches cultural trends. Dr. Giesler, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much, Dr. Smith. So you wrote a paper that was published in the Journal of Gender Studies that got a lot of attention. Tell us about what you found. I really started looking into the gender reveal trend around five or six years ago. And I traced back its origins to uh, around 2008, when it was more about an intimate setting and maybe one or two social media posts. But as this trend has escalated, now we see it as the social media phenomenon that it's become today. And with this trend always increasing, of course, any social media trend, there's a level of currency and competition. So that increases pressure on any expected parent to really make their gender reveal party as spectacular and extreme and extravagant as possible. So, so this one upsmanship is actually causing people to do things that are way beyond the idea of we want to have this moment, share what the gender is. It's now about who can put on the biggest show. And you say, even with this tragedy, these parties aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Yes, absolutely. First, because on the positive side of it, this, these celebrations really offer that sense of community and uh, a real connectedness. You can invite anyone across any social media platform into this very, once what was once a much more private moment and celebrate with them. But with that pressure to, as the parties have become more ritualized and more normalized in our culture, and the spectacle of social media has heightened the trend entirely, you see those kinds of unforeseen and tragic events like the El Dorado wildfire. And you just hope that in the future, these serve as cautionary tales. Yeah, and you say beyond the fact that these gender reveal parties are getting out of control, that the parties themselves have a problem because you say that the colors blue and pink are actually reinforcing gender stereotypes. In this progressive era, when we're more accepting of gender fluidity and an entire spectrum beyond just pink and blue, it seems limiting to any child who may not feel celebrated, categorized in one of those two classifications. Do you think that um, this is problematic for how children develop and and their identification, their gender identification? Certainly, this may alienate and isolate individuals that identify beyond that those types of categorizations. So celebrating a new life in this connective ceremonial ritual, of course, is a lovely tradition. It's a way to connect. And I believe that those who are involved really do have the best intentions at heart, yet I strongly advocate for inclusivity and awareness in attendance with these celebrations to transform those traditional ideals of the past into more enlightened celebrations for the future. Well, Dr. Geisler, thank you so much for shedding some light. Maybe there'll be a whole new color that's not boy or girl, but it's we're happy to have a child. <laughs> Absolutely. That's my hope. All right. Thanks. Thanks for joining us.